tonight, I'd like to talk about foster care and foster care reform. Fostering Great Ideas is the company I started about four to five years ago and went full time about a year ago. Our focus is on innovation in foster care, really changing the envelope. How do people think about foster care? What do we do for the children? How do we hear their voice, right? And then what do we do about it? Do we help them the way they would like to be helped? What does that look like? It's a think tank for foster care reform called Fostering Great Ideas. Thank you for being here. Tonight, I want to make four points. Is this too loud? First point number one, is it too loud? It's good. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to make four points. Foster care is a really tough place to be. We can do it better if we do it together. Solutions do exist, and it matters. Why does it matter? Because every child deserves to be heard. Every child deserves to be loved. Let's go back into our childhood, OK? Rest your eyes for a minute. Let's go back to your childhood home. What was the color in your, on your bedroom wall? What was the color of your bedroom wall? Rest your eyes, think about that. Now, as a kid, what was your favorite food? Chicken tenders, chicken fingers, cheese pizza, macaroni and cheese, mozzarella and cheese sticks, right? Brussels sprouts? No. Now, did you have a stuffed pet? Did you have a stuffed animal? Did you have a favorite pet? What was the name of that pet? And now tell the person to your right the name of the pet. Just humor me. Go for it. <laughs> Copycat and Tibby, I hear out there. Very nice. Good deal. So now, now imagine with me, imagine with me, you're at your childhood home and a stranger knocks on the door. Blue lights are flashing in the background. A knot of fear pits in your stomach. Your eyes grow wide. Imagine with me you having to leave your childhood home alone. Walking out the front door with your clothes hastily stuffed in a couple trash bags. Entering that stranger's car, chaos. Hearing a bunch of voices, a bunch of people talking around you, waiting. Imagine with me people saying, we're going to help, we're going to help. But what are you feeling? Completely stricken with a fear of loss from everything that I've come to know as a child. Am I not right? Can you imagine that with me? I have a friend who was a teenager living in foster care. He went through several foster and foster group homes, never really finding a place where he belonged. As a young adult, he poignantly said to me, David, I entered foster care alone and I left foster care alone. The 400,000 plus children who are in our country's foster care system entered because nobody close to them cared enough. The majority were abused, feeling significantly scared at home or neglected without their emotional or physical needs met. Social services tried to keep them out of foster care, but no caring, engaged relative rushed forward to provide the necessary relief. These 400,000 entered foster care because all options seemed exhausted, and each of these children was in imminent danger of further harm. 
half of the 400,000 children will go back to their family, a restored family unit, many within that first year. Of that group, 12% will re-enter foster care as a result of their caregiver's addiction or abuse kicking in again. For the other half of the 400,000, Anxiety increases as time ticks. When am I going home? Uh, will you adopt me? How long do I have to be here? Right? Living in foster care is never easy. For the children who live in care between one and two years, 37% will have entered their third or, or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh placement. So to the trauma of the original abuse and neglect, the trauma of the removal from everything a child knows, let's add an additional loss once in foster care. Additional goodbyes, additional longing, for some, an additional feeling of being completely alone. Foster families and foster group homes trying very hard to help have told you, you must leave. They feel very bad about it. They are crying. And you, you are devastated, numb to your feelings, ashamed, not really able to say goodbyes properly to the new friends you made or to the new school you were trying to learn at. Foster care is a very difficult place to be. To the adults who embrace these children out there, you are more precious to that child than gold. You know the child's pain, you know the child's suffering, and you meet the child where they're at. And if you're not getting the support you want, by golly, demand it. You deserve it. To the children, I want to say, you are more precious than words can express. Am I not right? You deserve so much more than what our society currently provides you. Foster care is a very tough place to be. We can do it better if we do it together. Jasmine, a 15-year-old, very intelligent girl, she has, a, she has an extreme independent streak. Some would call that stubbornness, right? <laughs> she is very good engaging with her friends at school. She's a top student. Jasmine also is like a lot of other teenage girls. She likes shopping. She likes movies, and she likes texting and talking, among many other things. Jasmine lives in foster care, or lived in foster care, I should say. She was used to relationships that were cut too short. And she felt the overwhelming pain of that. Over time, she had developed a fortress around her, filled with brick after brick, after relationship cut too short, relationship cut too short. But you know what? Jasmine took a chance. She took a chance on one more person. Her name is Jamie. Jamie is in her 30s. She wanted to do more volunteer work. And she came to me. She said, look, I've learned about the needs of children in foster care, and I want to help. And she became one of our mentors. We have the largest mentor program for youth in foster care in the state. And in that relationship, she said to Jasmine, look, I'm not going to let you go as long as you're in foster care and beyond. I, I won't. And Jasmine said, OK. And from there, they went through the teenage struggles, right? And they went through the boyfriend. There's a big deal. And they went through the multiple foster placements. And in all of that, Jamie stayed committed. And Jasmine slowly took the bricks off the wall of the fortress. 
a little more about that story later on. But I want to go now to how we can do even more if we just do it together. Picture yourself only in your swimsuit. All right? You got to do that with me. Everybody good? Excellent. We all enjoy swimming because we know the outcome. We know the result. It's very pleasurable, very refreshing. But isn't that, isn't that a refreshing feeling better than doing slides? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that refreshing feeling only as a result of knowing that it's about to come? A lot of us don't want to dip our toes in. It's cold, right? Brrr. But we do because we know the outcome. We know the result. So an analogy is foster care is like a really big, cold, really cold swimming pool that we all like to stand around the pool and look at it. Are you ready to go into the water with me a little bit? Shall we go into the shallow end to start? In the shallow end, a community can get very involved in helping a child in foster care by listening to the child, by listening to what a child's emotion is trying to say to them. So I'll give you two simple examples. A child is trying to say, I just got removed from my family. I'm afraid. I'm in fear, right? So our community donated this year over 400 teddy bears to children in two adjoining counties, our own. 400 teddy bears equals 400 children comforted. Bam, just like that, through community drives. Another simple approach from the shallow end, luggage. Children in foster care often get an initial duffel bag, but after that, you're on your own, baby. A lot of kids, and I mean, it's a national epidemic, move from home to home with trash bags. These are not disposable children. So, very simply, our community had a community drive, has had four of them this last year. Over 750 pieces of luggage have been given to children in foster care as they move from home to home. I want to give you a couple quotes from a couple of the caseworkers specifically on that idea. This child was surprised that they were worthy of such nice luggage. Worthy. Another one, a caseworker said, this child said, do I have to give this bag back? She was so excited and several times if the luggage wasn't really asked, is the luggage really mine to keep? Well, of course it is. So a community can really help a lot in the shallow, and every community can do these. They just need a structured approach, and a lot of you. <laughs> there are a lot of other great ideas that are in the shallow end. But now, I want to go to the deep end. Who wants to go to the deep end with me? Oh, wait, 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 wait. It is cold. Cold. There are children in extreme need in the deep end. All right? However, Every child in foster care needs us to dive in. Amen? You can dive in in any number of ways if you'd like to. You can make a splash as a foster parent, right? So, quick statistic. 454, 1,324. 454 are the number of foster homes in the upstate of South Carolina where we are. 1,324 are their number of children in our county, upstate, upstate counties. That's abysmal. Shocking. It's the truth. Jump in. Support a foster parent. It's very difficult work. Very difficult work. There are a number of specifically faith-based communities that really focus on the support of foster parents. Amen. Very important. Jump in and be a CASA, a national organization. We call it Guardian Ad Litem here 
where you become an advocate for that child during the entire whirlwind, during their entire time in the deep end. You are somebody who interviews all the players who really understands from a child's perspective what they want, and they want it quickly. They want to be permanent in somebody's home now. They don't want to live in foster care forever. You become that person. Become a guardian ad litem or a casa. Jump in and become a mentor, just like Jamie, right? She found her niche there. It's a great way to guide a child while they're in this turmoil, this time away from family and all they know. Jump in. We need more of us, right? So, or you can jump in, and I'm going to just lay it out there by being a donor. The cold pool of foster care is extremely cold to these children through nobody's fault. It's just the difficulty of the situation. We need cold cash. Did you get that? Cute, huh? Laugh. That was cute. We need cold cash only in certain areas. And I don't mean only in a bad way. I mean only because you need to focus. You need to focus on what would a child want that cold cash for? From a child's perspective, that's all about my company. From a child's perspective, what do they want? How can you meet their emotional need? From a child's perspective, they want that first foster care placement to be the Taj Mahal. They want it to be the best. So they don't what? Move. They don't want to move, right? However, now across the state, across the nation, that first placement receives no additional support. It blows my mind then the second placement or the third placement or the fourth placement. Sure, the kid might get somebody to help the kid, but the real issue is the dynamic between somebody who's been severely traumatized and just came and left their house and came into your home and needs to learn love and you as the foster parent. And you need somebody entering your home as an educated counselor, a family therapist, a family educator to help you and that child work through so many issues that cause disruptions, that cause children to have to leave. Wouldn't that be a great idea? There does need to be a pilot study on this concept. Amen. Another great idea comes from children is if I'm in foster care and, and my family falls apart, I'm part of the 50% who I don't go back to family, the restored family unit. What, what, what's my next interest? My next interest is my sibling, is it not? And with over half the children in foster care nationally having at least one of their siblings in a different foster placement, a foster group home or a foster home, wouldn't it be smart to make sure there's a transport system so those two, the sibs, see each other routinely? And I don't mean just once a month or once every six weeks. I mean to build that bond because that child wants that bond more than anything right now, right? Fortunately, in our community, through a very kind donation and through the partnership of our social services, an innovative social service agency, we have what's called Siblink. It's a transport system specifically for these siblings I'm talking about. It is excitement from the national side looking at it. This needs to be routine in every community in our nation. It is not. That's the problem. Solutions do exist. They require an educated community, and I hope I've given you a nice lay of the land here, and well thought out ideas. The system needs all of us in any measure. We need to jump in in some kind of measure. Foster care is a really tough place to be. Solutions do exist if we jump in together and it matters. Why does it matter? Let's go back to the story of Jasmine, shall we? Jasmine learned that this relationship was different. And Jamie, the mentor, learned that she could help Jasmine and she loved Jasmine. So Jasmine, this summer, wrote a four stanza poem specifically to her mentor, Jamie. I'm going to start with the first stanza. The heart of this woman is what saved me. The smile of this woman is contagious. I wouldn't trade her for anything, not even 10,000 diamonds. Her eyes are like jewels. The love they show, show is more valuable than gold. My best friend, my miracle, my strong angel. When I'm around her, I feel free, not scared to be. Get this, because she loves me, 
for the way I am. Right? Chills down the spine on that. I'd like to close with one of the final stanzas of Jane Jazz's four stanza poem. And there's a surprise in it, okay? So everybody listen up. I was lost and she found me, broken and frightened. She fixed me and brightened me, breaking down my walls. I could go on forever telling you about this amazing woman and how much of an impact she's had on me. This woman is now my mother and her family is now mine. I finally found a family, something I waited for all my life. Mom, I love you. You're the most precious thing to me. You gave me the most beautiful gift ever to be a part of this family. My smiles today are truly real because now I'm finally complete. The emptiness I felt inside is no longer there. Because you filled it with love and joy, the precious moments forever I will cherish. Jasmine belongs. And isn't that what we all want? And isn't that what the 400,000 plus children who live in foster care want? They want a place to call home. So thank you for listening and enjoy your swim. <laughs>